I am really excited to share a new tool with you that I filed a patent for that not only makes the five cut method obsolete, but takes all the frustrations out of making a cross cut sled as well as other jigs and accessories. You know, I've always been obsessed with accuracy and like elegant simplicity in tool design. And that's why we've created things like the apron, the dovetail jig and the stop lock. They all solved problems that were either somebody had overcomplicated or released tools that didn't do what they said they were gonna do. Now, cross cut sleds are like an undeniable necessity in woodworking. It's my my most used jig, I think anybody else who has one says it's the most used tool in their shop, but they can be frustrating for beginners and experienced woodworkers alike. I still get frustrated by them. Now, we recently did a poll on Instagram where 43% of the people who responded said they hadn't attempted one yet because they were worried about the fabrication process and more so worried about the five cut method and that it was frustrating or confusing. In fact, this is my first cross cut sled. You can see there's a whole bunch of empty holes here, which were all new attempts at dialing that fence in. In fact, it took me a few hours to do it. For years, it drove me nuts that there wasn't a better solution. It was something I thought about all the time. And this is something I'm an expert in. You know, we have the top Google search for five cut method calculator over at camtools.com. I've done tons of sled videos. I've taught this many, many times, but it's something that I still get frustrated about when I build sleds. So today I'm so excited to announce we came up with a solution, which is the Katz Moses Jig Square. It is an elegantly simple tool design that is manufactured to the same tolerances as a stair at square, so plus or minus 0.03 degrees, which is over two times more square than the max tolerance for that five cut method calculator that we talked about in our previous video. So come on in, let me show you how it works. All right, it has two fixed coplanar tabs and then an expandable one, which you adjust with this really nice brass thumb screw here, which allows it to lock into any kerf from 0.08 inches to about 0.24 inches. So what you do, on a sled, for example, you raise your blade up and that kerf that is left by your blade, it can lock into it. You can then clamp your fence to this big aluminum plate here and shoot screws from the bottom of the base of your sled, which allows you to have a perfectly square fence with no adjustment, no five cut method and no frustrations. In fact, we even came up with this really innovative sled kit that makes it a lot easier. And we're gonna build that in just a second here, but I wanna talk about maybe some of the other uses for this. One of my favorites is the track saw. So it fits into the kerf of your track saw. So if you need a perpendicular cut, Maybe you have a weird shape with no reference that you're trying to cut something square out of. Where you're just trying to conserve material, this works great with a track saw. And you can put it anywhere in your cut, which is really cool. It works for adjusting the fence on your miter saw. So if your miter saw is just barely out of square, this is a great way to do that. We'll do like a short video on how that works here pretty soon. The tabs are adjustable, so you can actually move them into the middle here. There's the new battery powered table and miter saws that have the smaller blades. So if you have a smaller kerf, this would work great for for that. If you can think of any other cool ways to use this, I'd love to hear. This is so new that we're still kind of figuring out new ways to use it all the time. Before we get into building this really cool sled kit, which I think is really kind of innovative, it takes some of the frustrations out of sled building. I want to tell you this is in stock right now. It's not a pre-sale. If we do sell out, I'll put it on pre-sale. I've already ordered the next batch, so uh, they'll be here in a few weeks. There will be bundles with T-Track, Stop Block, the fence kits, or you can buy them individually. So pin comment, description, now let's build a sled. When you're making a cross-cut sled, the fences are the most time consuming consuming thing. You got to clamp them up, cut them up, make sure they're flat, square, and straight. So when I was developing this, I was making sleds nonstop. I made so many, I lost count, and I was having to joint every fence because I didn't want to introduce any air from my fence because one of the problems is your fence is slightly bowed. Suddenly you can't tell if this is square or if this is out of square. It's a whole ordeal. So I created a CNC program so I could rapidly batch fences. I probably made 50, 60 sleds, and I got really fast. I can do it in 10 minutes with this kit. 10 minutes start to finish if you don't count dry time for the fences. The other thing that's really annoying is I can never find those little three quarter inch screws you need so you don't shoot through your cross cut sled up above. So we included those, all the hardware you need to make your sled. In fact, only thing we don't include is the base because it would be kind of ridiculous to ship this. The rear fence, the one closest to you is almost 24 inches. Fence furthest away from you is 15 inches. You get two runners, all the hardware, but that's not even the coolest part. Let me show you what is actually so cool about this kit and why it makes it so easy to get flat, square, and straight. All right, so here's what I came up with that makes this so easy. These have six holes in them. They're equally centered both length and width wise, and they're all cut from the same sheet of plywood. But the two outside pieces are chamfered on the edges, which is good for dust when you're using your sled. So I did that for you. And what happens is because of these holes, it forces you to flip one piece over. So. Plywood always in, you know, they say plywood's flat, but that's in like a square inch. It is very, very flat. But over a big sheet of plywood, it's got a little twist or a little cup to it. And this forces you to flip them one of the pieces over, which is gonna force all those 
all those internal stresses in the wood, it's gonna equalize them. And then what you're gonna do is clamp it down flat like you see over here. And it's going to ensure that when you glue this up, it's super straight. In fact, let me show you. All right, so you have two pieces with no chamfered holes and you have two pieces with three chamfered holes. And you wanna make sure that there is a chamfer hole on each end. You're gonna flip those over. We're gonna put glue on. Now, like I said, you do not wanna get squeeze out because then you just have to clean it up. So this is how I do it. I just go around the holes like this and then circle back. Boom, that's it. Put the piece over the top of it. Do the same thing. Piece on top, just like that. And this is where having a flat surface will be good. All right, now we're gonna shoot screws in just the chamfered holes. So it's gonna be three from each side. These are inch and three quarter screws, so they fit perfectly. So you wanna drive them home pretty good. But I've left this one misaligned here just to show you how good this system is at lining these up. Like, watch this. Did you see that? Did you see that just come right in there? And then we're gonna go ahead, do our other ones here. I like to just hold it flat on my flat surface. I'm gonna flip it like this, same thing. You wanna make sure they're below the surface. Just like this, and see I got a little squeeze out here. I'm gonna wipe that off before it dries. Same thing up here, but look how perfectly flat that is already. Those screws bring everything in, you can see just super flat, straight, and square. And just to make sure, what we're gonna do is clamp it to our flat surface. All right, same thing with the small fence, except it has three holes. The outside piece on this one has two chamfered holes, and this one has one. You also will know those outside pieces because they have a chamfered edge. We're just gonna flip those over. We're gonna do the same thing we did before. Flip that over, making sure the chamfered holes are in the outside. Put it on its edge. Just like that. And this is where clamping becomes really important. I'm gonna make sure we don't have any squeeze out. So you can clamp it on top of each other as long as you didn't put a lot of glue and you're not gonna get a bunch of drips. This is where I like to do my table saw wing too. And this is not even for clamping pressure because your screws are gonna take care of that. This is just to ensure that it dries as flat as humanly possible. The screws are already doing most of the work, but this is just gonna ensure that no moisture or anything from the glue causes any minor cupping or anything like that. And that's all you need to do, just like that. All right, so these are the ones I just took out of the clamps. I haven't done anything to these. You could take your sandpaper and give them like a scuff sand. This would also be the time if you were gonna put T-Track in, you would route or uh, use a dado stack to cut your groove, which also is so easy because these are super flat. But like, look at how flat and square these are. They're incredible. In fact, check this out. This is the important fence, your back one. Like, it is dead flat. Absolutely dead flat. So, we're done. We're ready to go make our sled. I mean, that, with filming, took two minutes, tops, so. Here we go, let's go make a sled over the table saw. I'm gonna show you how to adjust the runners. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the runners on. Um, this is, again, the base that is not providing any piece of scrap. These runners, they're designed to be slightly too big for a three quarter inch miter slot so you can dial them in, but test them first. See, that doesn't quite fit in there, but you don't wanna go too much more than that. You want it to fit it kind of snug without any side to side play. So. The way I like to do this is with a piece of sandpaper. I like to do both runners at the same time and I like to put them sideways in my miter slot. That way after every kind of stroke, I could test them and see if they fit. So the way this works is, and I don't wanna block you where right hand is, I like to put my finger at the end to keep it from moving. I'll just take my block plane and shave it like this. And don't worry, if you go a little too far, just put a little piece of blue tape in there to make them snug again. I'll then check it. Ooh, look at that. No side to side, fits perfect. That was just two strokes with my block plane. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put these on. So we need some washers. So those are gonna go like this. You can use dimes or pennies or shekels or Canadian Copex, I don't care. But you wanna basically elevate your runner so it's just barely above the surface of your miter slot. And we're gonna do that and put some super glue on them and then put our base on.
Then I'm gonna slide it out. I'm not gonna lift it up because these are tight, so I don't want to pop the super glue off. So I'm just gonna slide it out here. A couple of things you saw me do there is use a tiny bit of super glue because uh, you really don't want to squeeze out because of course that's gonna affect the fit of your runners. The other thing is I used my fence to just sort of make it square to the runners. So then I'm gonna drill some holes and put those included screws into the runners and then I'm gonna show you how to attach the fence and then square it up with uh, the jig square. So now we're gonna go ahead and attach our fences. You notice I haven't taken the screws out yet and those are actually what you're gonna to use to attach it to your sled. So remove those, cause you don't wanna hit those with a saw blade. You can give them a quick clean up, just like, just a quick little once over, the corners are already chamfered. So we're gonna pull those screws out. I'm gonna attach the front fence, uh, cause that doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna raise the blade and show you how to use the jig square. Okay, so it's jig square time, and one thing you wanna keep in mind is when you raise your blade up, you wanna come this way far enough that you don't have a huge space in the back of your sled. I like to leave about an inch between the back of my sled and my fence, and so I'm just gonna kinda of put my jig square roughly where that kerf is gonna be. I'm just gonna make a little pencil mark to that first tab, and I wanna make sure that my kerf goes that far. So you can see right here, I've got a little pencil mark that's where I'm gonna try and bring my kerf to when I raise my blade here. So let's raise our blade and I'll show you how this thing works. One thing to note that I almost forgot there is you gotta take out your riving knife. Otherwise, this is gonna try and raise into your sled and it's not gonna work. All right, now this is where it just gets so easy. You're gonna need three clamps and the jig square. Just drops in there, and you saw I went backwards a little bit. You have to make sure you have enough room, but then check it out. We're just gonna expand this tab. You don't wanna crank on as hard as you can. You just wanna get it locked in there. We're then gonna take our fence right here. Boom. And now I'm gonna use two clamps on either side. This is gonna help in case you have any bow whatsoever. This is gonna help take any last little bend out and you just go like that, and then watch this. I'm just gonna lift it up like this, and I'm just gonna put one clamp on, and that's just gonna keep the fence from put, getting pushed out by the drill bit. And I'm gonna drill five holes, on three on one side of the kerf, and uh, two on the other. Just like that, we have a super square sled, but let's test it. I'm gonna do a super lazy man's T-track. I'm just gonna shoot it to the top of the fence. And in case you don't know, it's called a Vix bit. It's a self-centering drill bit. It's often used for hinges, but it's great for stuff like this. So uh, not a promotion or anything. I just really like them. All right, Mark, cue the dramatic music. Let's see how she did. Five cut method calculator over at camtools.com. 0.466 inches side A, 0.459 inches side B, 5.83 inch off cut, 23.75 inch pivot screw distance. Brrr, move your fence by 0 0.007 inches, less than 1 1 28th over 24 inches. Let's ask chat GPT what angle that is. Remember our stated tolerance is 0 0.03 degrees three times less than before you can see light with a stare at square. What has an angle of 0 .007 inches and a run of 23.75 inches? ChatGPT says 0 .017 degrees, half of our stated tolerance. That's crazy for a measuring device tool. Guys, that's incredible. <laughs> so cool. I, you know what, it's so funny. I've tested this a hundred times and I knew it was gonna work, but I still was nervous there. <laughs> Guys, Thank you for your support. Head over to camtools.com. We've got sled kits. We've got bundles with T-Track and stop blocking. Of course, we have the new Cats Moses Jig Square. Let me know any other uses you come up with down in the pin comment or down in the comments. And guys, I I'm humbled by your support. It's so fun doing this kind of stuff. Filing a patent was so cool. We worked so hard on this. And I'm really proud of this, like really proud. So thank you for your support. I hope you love it as much as I do. 
And uh, stay safe and shop. Have a wonderful day.